Hi hey there, and welcome to another pencast for the course of Reasoning and Logic. In this one, I want to take a quick look at another old exam question. This one is a question about a recursively defined set, B, that contains some words and then some rules on how to construct other words. Uh, and the question asks us to prove that for all words in the set B, it is true that twice the number of Z's in W is at most as high as the number of A's. Okay. Now, before we dive into the full proof, let's start and reintroduce some shorthand for this kind of stuff. So let's introduce a function fz for the words and fa for words that count the number of z's in w and the number of a's in w. And now our claim reads the following. For all words in B, two times the number of Z's is as most as high as, so is smaller or equal to, the number of A's in W. And this is the claim that we need to prove. So let's start our proof. I'll also move this down a little bit. There we go. For our proof, what do we need to do? Well, it's a proof by structural induction, which means that the first thing we're going to do is look at our base cases. And what are our base cases? Well, all of the rules that are not recursive. In this case, there are two such rules. Pan is an element of B, and B is an element of B. So we need to take a look at the words pan and at the word B. Okay, let's take a look. The number of Z's in pan multiplied by two. Well, that's two times zero. Okay, this needs to be smaller than something that turns out to be the number of A's in pan. And the number of A's in pan is clearly one. And two times zero equals zero, which is indeed smaller or equal than one, which is the number of A's. So for this base case, it holds. Now, what about the base case for just the letter B? Well, this is again zero. And surprise, surprise, in the word containing only the letter B, there are zero a's and zero, last time I checked, is still smaller or equal to zero, because it's equal. So both base cases hold. Next up, we need an induction hypothesis. So take arbitrary words, plural. Why plural? Well, if you look at this rule, there's actually two things from the set B that we need here. So we need arbitrary words, uh, let's call them K and M from B. So let me remove the and and just uh, put a comma, K and B, uh, M and B, such that F Z of K is smaller than or equal, two times F Z of K is smaller than or equal f a of k and two times f z of m is also smaller or equal to f a of m. Okay, what do I now need to prove? To prove, I need to prove that two times f z of a uh, z M, or well, let's use K, it doesn't really matter, but KAA is smaller or equal to two times FA of AZKAA. This is rule two. You can't see all of rule two, but there we go, right? Oh. If X is in B, then this should be in B. 
So if the property holds for this, it should also hold for AZKAA. And later on, we also need to do the same for this one, but let's do this one first. So I'll put it down probably around here. We also need to prove that two times the number of Zs in Z K B M A A Z K B M A A is smaller or equal to two times the number of A's in oh, sorry, not two times. I made the mistake earlier here as well. Just the number of A's uh, in Z K B M A A. And this corresponds to the third recursive rule from our set definition. Now then, let's do this one. So how do we do this? Two times the number of Z's in A, Z, K, A, A. Well, that, because, of the, because this is just a word, we can say, well, that's two times the number of Z's in A plus the number of Z's in Z plus the number of Z's in K plus the number of Z's in A plus the number of Z's in A. And that's very nice because this one, this one, and this one are all zero and this is one. So this is two times F of Z of K plus one. So this is two times f of z of k plus one. Ah, but I know something about fz of k. In fact, I know something about two times fz of k. It is smaller or equal to fa of k, which means that this is smaller or equal to, two, to fa of k plus one. Hmm. But f a of k plus 1, okay, what is that? Uh, well, that is surely equal to the number of a's in a plus the number of z a's in z plus the number of a's in k, right? Because this is 1 and this is 0, so this is the number of a's in a z k. But I need a z k a a. Huh. So I'm adding more things. Okay. So this is smaller or equal to the number of a's of a z k plus two, which is equal to the number of a's in a z k a a. And now, if we follow the whole chain, and we need to do this carefully, right? I'm only introducing smaller or equals in this chain, which is a transitive operation. So transitively, we see that this thing, two times fz of a z k a a, is smaller or equal to the number of a's in a z k a a. And that's exactly what I wanted to prove. So the first part is done. And I realized that I've been writing behind my webcam a little bit. But here we go. This is becoming quite a long video. Sorry for that. But we have one more part to go. So let's jump right in. Two times. Oh, let me do this in white. Two times the number of Z's in ZK BMAA is equal to two times the number of Z's in Z plus the number of Z's in K, plus the number of Z's in B, plus, and so on, and so forth. Again, there is some we can easily uh, fill out. There we go. So this is two times one, plus f of z of k and fz of m. 
Ah, but I know something about both of these. By the induction hypothesis, let me write this out fully. By the induction hypothesis, I know that each of them is smaller than the number of A's in their word. So let's apply that induction hypothesis. I know this is smaller or equal using the induction hypothesis. I just realized I forgot to write that down here. Using the induction hypothesis, I know this must be equal, a smaller or equal than 2 plus the number of A's in K plus the number of A's in M. I've applied the induction hypothesis both here and here. And both are smaller or equal, so transitively I can apply this. You can do it in two separate steps if you want, and you will see the transitivity more clearly. Okay, uh, that's great, because that means I'm almost there. Now I just need to introduce the letters Z, B, and double A again. Okay, um, so this is equal to F of Z, uh, sorry, F of A of Z which is 0, plus f of a of k, which we already had, plus f of a of b, which is 0, plus f of a of m, which we already had, plus f of a of a, which is 1, plus f of a of a, which is 1. And that's exactly the 2 that we had over there. And those we can, of course, just all add to get z, k, b, m, a, a which is exactly the thing I wanted to prove. Oh. Exactly the thing I wanted to prove. And again, transitively, we can see that two times this thing equals, 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 smaller than or equals, equals, equals this thing. So the second part also worked out. Now all we need to do is wrap up the proof since uh, K and M were arbitrarily chosen. By the principle of induction, it holds for all W and B the number of Z's, two times the number of Z's in B, uh, sorry, not in B, in W, is smaller or equal than the number of A's in W. Q, E, D. Let me zoom out to show you the whole proof. Oh, without moving arbitrary parts of the proof around, something like this will do. There we go. If I zoom out more, it might become illegible, but you can also see the definition of B then. And again, remember that in the structural induction proofs, for non-recursive rules, we need base cases. And for recursive rules, we need recursive statements or uh, induction steps that use the induction hypothesis at some point. This is actually a little bit longer. So there you have it, an example of a proof by structural induction for an old exam question. That's all I wanted to talk to you about in this video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you for a next one. Bye for now.